hey black magic hear me out so people that have the black magic pocket 4k black magic pocket 6k and the black magic pocket 6k pro why not make a firmware that we can download and then run it and we also do have those possibility of filming in h264 and h265 black magic if you do that i will give you a very big thumbs up are you looking for the ursa mini form factor with the pocket 6k sensor if the answer is yes black magic have just released the ursa broadcast g2 and they are calling this camera a three in one camera because you can use this camera as a broadcast production camera live production camera and if you fancy making a hollywood blockbuster you can also use this as a cinema camera first you have the body that look almost identical as the previous generation which is actually a very good idea if you think about it. So let's say you do have the previous generation and you really want to get the Ursa G2 broadcast, but keeping the accessories the same, that would save you more money in terms of buying more accessories. Now, if you have used some of the previous Ursa broadcast camera, I'm sure you will notice how bad those camera was in terms of low light performance, which is something that so many people or previous Blackmagic clients was complaining about. But now with the new model, you do have a 6K Super 35 sensor with dual native ISO at 400 and 3200, which means you can now shoot at any lighting condition without worrying about your image falling apart which I think is one of these camera biggest advantage. And for people who used to say, I wish my Pocket 6K had SDI and so and so, I'm sure so many people will love the combination of the Pocket 6K sensor with everything that the Ursa body has to offer. This is actually a similar approach to what Sony have done when they took the A7S III sensor and made a new body and put that inside and called the whole thing Sony FX6 because they really wanted to give filmmaker more control and the ability to have more accessories on to their camera. So it's very good to see Blackmagic using the 6K sensor in a different form factor or different way. But even though this is good, I'm going to say this Blackmagic, we do want a boxy design body, something that's very easy to carry, something that's very easy to balance and something that's very easy to rig. And you guys know, we have been waiting for that camera for a long time anyway the camera comes with a b4 lens mount installed and the most interesting thing is actually how the camera crops in when using b4 lens you only get 4k or uhd and if you want to use this camera for cinema purpose or using it on set and you do have a set of ef lenses the camera come with a spare EF mount, which you can actually install and use and take advantage of that 6K sensor, which is a great option to include a lens mount because you are giving those people who shoot commercial music video or anything else that you see fit the ability to actually be able to use their lenses. Just like the previous Blackmagic G2 cameras, this camera sits very well on the shoulder and all the ENG control, they are very accessible. When it comes to codec and their flexibility, we all love Blackmagic RAW and ProRes recording, but this time, Blackmagic decided, listen, we do have to introduce two new codec, which are the H264 and H265 recording in camera, which also has their high, low and medium recording options. There is also a mode or an option that give you either, you know, H264 or H265 in 10-bit 422, which they are calling SDI, which is a fantastic idea and a great option for broadcast, but I'm not really a big fan, or it's not something that I would use that much because I'm not actually never a fan of H264 or H265, but 
I can see myself using this more. Let's say I'm shooting a podcast or any show that need a quick turnaround. So I can just get 10 bit 422 H264 or H265 grade it quick and then send it for a quick upload with those two new codec it's actually good to give creators more flexibilities which is something that i tend to love black magic for but hey black magic hear me out so people that have the black magic pocket 4k black magic pocket 6k and the black magic pocket 6k pro why not make a firmware that we can download and then run it and we also do have those possibility of filming in h264 and h265 black magic if you do that i will give you a very big thumbs up also guys comments below if you agree with me or comments below if you think that is something that black magic should do listen there's so many things that i really want to know about this camera and i'm actually looking forward to seeing more hands-on videos and comparison between the original g2 and the g2 broadcast especially with the difference in dynamic range so the original g2 has a 15 stops of dynamic range and the new g2 broadcast only has a 13 also the difference between both sensors when it comes to image quality and i want to see with my eyes how both camera render skin tone if you ask me and in my humble opinion i will tell you this camera shine more as a broadcast camera because of all the control black magic broadcasting accessories combined with the b4 lens capability and black magic hardware and software integration but let's not forget this camera is very affordable and as a broadcast camera and a live production camera for that price listen that is what you call a bargain i also think since this camera is going to be used more as a broadcast camera the rolling shutter can be an issue sometime, especially when you're filming sport, something that people are running fast and you need to kind of zoom in and out. But this camera will be very good for like news or something that really require the subject to be static because if you don't need those, you know, pan left and right or zoom in and out, you are good to go there's few things that comes to mind when i think about things that would make me not like this camera and as someone who's used the original g2 there's a few drawback that we need to talk about the first thing is the lack of slow motion at high resolution but i'm not worried about that because i know Blackmagic can just bring a firmware update that would unlock the sensor and then it will be able to do more. But Blackmagic, if you're open to do that, I'm sure the people that like this camera would appreciate that even more. Another thing is the two stops of dynamic range compared to the original Ursa G2. But I guess this doesn't matter too much because listen, this is more of a broadcast camera or People who buy it will prefer to use it more as a broadcast camera, but me as a DP, the more dynamic range, the better. And the last drawback to this camera to me is the tiny four inch screen. That's quite, um, when I film outside with the previous G2 that we used, it was not actually bright enough. And now that Blackmagic have decided to kind of redesign the camera, I was actually expecting for, for them to kind of make the screen more brighter because I actually struggled to see outside and I did use an external monitor and I was able to monitor everything correctly, but that might be me or if you had the same problem, comments below, but Blackmagic, I would have loved, you know, for you to just make that screen a bit brighter, but again, that is few thing also black magic mentioned that they have been waiting for the sensor but the sensor have not been delivered douche dude 
I don't know who's holding those sensors. We need those sensors because that could actually be the camera that we've been waiting for. And actually the fact that Blackmagic managed to say that on their live event, I kind of felt like I need to take that pressure away from them to give us that boxy design the camera but black magic i'm counting on you anyway guys thank you so much for watching if you're new here my name is kasha lembo and on this channel we talk about film related stuff to help you improve your visual storytelling also comment below on something that you felt like i miss or something that you love about this camera again Stay safe and stay creative.